that. I thought death had cured me of my appetite, but damn if I can't stop thinking about the smell of tear stew. Awakened a fair few culinary cravings, did. Black pudding, haggis and neeps. Oh, porridge and honey. What about you, brother? Any pre-thimble winter foods you're aching for? Olives. The hell's an olive? Legendary weapon. You have a favorite father? No. They are tools for specific tasks. A preference would be meaningless. I like the axe. I too like the axe. What are you doing? The bridge only grows in the daylight. I. I wanted to see the wolves again. I suppose they are grateful for the attention. Them. Now call back Hardy and let's go. Uh, so, Lady Freya, read any good books lately? <sighs> Just curious, brother. Why don't you like riddles? They are frivolous. They encourage lateral thinking. Listen, there are three doors before you. One contains a pit of spikes, one a dragon, and one a pair of lions that haven't been fed in weeks. Which door do you open? Hmm. The first. A pit of spikes is easily avoided. Ah, you should pick the third, because lions that haven't been fed in weeks would be dead! Eh? Hmm. I like this riddle. You painted these shrines. Some of them. Some I finished for my mother. Your work is beautiful. Your skill with a brush is unmatched, Angerboda. My son. He draws. He told me. Although he'd do well to learn from your use of color. We come from a long line of artisans, so he has it in him. He just needs some discipline to bring it out. <laughs> I like you. Do you rescue those stags yet? Whole tree will die if you don't. So, yeah, take your fucking time. Anyhow, was there something else you wish to talk about? We have not yet found all of your... creatures. We will continue to look. Incomplete. Pity. Oh, shush. That is a very considerate update, and your perspicacity is appreciated. Perseverance. Will you please stop being such a perfectionist? No. Which aspect is he, then? Oh, um, my perfectionism. I really shouldn't let him get to me. He's just so disconcertingly economical with his prose, you know? So laconic. One might even say terse. Fewer words, greater impact. I like this one. <sighs> I thought you might. Well, you've met them all now. I'm so very sorry. Please don't judge me too harshly, Master Kratos. Leaving. I suppose I needn't take up more of your time. So you just refuse to pick a favorite poem? That's uncharacteristically indecisive of you. I have a favorite poem already. One from my homeland. Come on, brother. Let's have it. You mentioned you had a favorite poem from your homeland. What was it about? A cunning general. A war over forbidden love. I believe I've heard of this one. Did it involve a horse that was not as it appeared? Yes. But that is not what happened. Oh, it's based on truth then. And you were there. Yes. I prefer the poem. Mir, you may tell a story, if you wish. Am I preferable to silence at last? A rare day. I'm touched. But since you mention it, there has been one in my mind of late. It goes back to my earliest days, when I had little more to do than observe the mortals who passed through our forest. One summer, a local laird of renowned eccentricity chose to sequester himself with a small coterie of kinsmen and followers. The aim of their woodland retreat was to achieve enlightenment through study and discipline. They took oaths to brook no distractions until they became wise men. Distractions? Ah, women. Drink. Mostly women. As you can imagine, things deteriorated quickly. 
By autumn, tempers were frayed and wisdom remained in short supply. One day, I watched as the laird and his brother took their hunt. There they found, at the banks of a river, a lady as fair as any they'd left behind. She pleads for their assistance, for fear the currents would carry her off if she tried to cross. The laird doesn't miss a beat. He hoists her onto his shoulders, carries her across, sets her down, doffs his cap, and fords back across to his brother, who is dumbfounded, can't even bring himself to speak. The day stretches on, the laird carries on hunting, and his brother quietly gnashes his teeth down to powder. Finally, the dam breaks. Brother, he cries, how could you do it after everything we've sacrificed? How could you break your vow like it was nothing? Carrying that lass on your shoulders like you were a Shetland pony. The laird just smiles. Brother, I set that lass down across the river. It is you that carries her still. <laughs> oh, I got a chuckle. A rare day indeed. Hi there. I wanted to ask, do you want me to stop talking about your muscles and, uh, and, and, and how you look? and stuff, because it seems like it's making you all wiggly, like in a bad way. It did, but no longer. Oh, okay. So I, so I should stop? Sounds like I should stop. No. Oh, all right, handsome. You beefcake? I have met many on my travels. You are one of the few I would call friend. I always thought you were one of the dumbest creatures I'd ever met. Didn't expect you to be the bravest, too. You know, back in Jotunheim, I had half a mind to ask Angerboda what exactly her intentions were with the lad. But one look at her and any doubts I had melted away. <laughs> it's a question every parent must grapple with sooner or later. I trusted her with my life. I trust her with my son. You can't argue with that. It is gone. What is? The passage to the Norns. What would we need to go back there for, brother? I thought Atreus would like the horse. You know what? My face is itchy. I think my beard's coming in. Is it? Yeah, on my jawline. See? It's growing. Is it? That's not just dirt. It's not dirt. 